Phil Soren's career trajectory included a variety of course changes. He left a comfortable job as a math teacher to become a stockbroker. He then worked his way up the management chain at IBM and years later decided to work for an emerging growth business until it was acquired. Next was another small software business, but it wasn't a good fit and he left two months after starting. With four kids, a mortgage, and other bills to be paid, it was a tough choice, he says, but he knew it would have been worse to stay. And this gave him the opportunity to finally become an entrepreneur. With the encouragement and support from his wife, Maggie, Soren spent the next six months in the basement of his Eden Prairie home. And when he surfaced, it was with an idea for what would thereafter become Ziotech. Uh, on Ziotech, you know, it was kind of interesting. Uh, uh, John Guider and Larry Asman were, were my two partners. Larry and I were next door neighbors. So it was a little bit of, uh, you know, location, location, location. And we started talking a little bit on the, on the driveway. And we were very different. I mean, we didn't socialize that much together. But uh, they're engineers, so we need that skill. And I was more of the sales, marketing, and fundraiser. Uh, but it was kind of interesting. We always said that we had the team first and the idea second. So we started meeting in my basement. We didn't have the idea yet. We started noodling some things on the whiteboard, and uh, that ended up being Ziotech. So what we basically invented was the storage area network from all that, uh, those noodlings down the basement. And kind of the same thing happened at Compellent, too. We went back to the same basement. Um, this time it had carpeting rather than a concrete floor, so a little nicer environment to, to work out of. And uh, once again, the team got together, and uh, we came up with the ideas after we started meeting in the basement. Ziotech and Compellent became Minnesota's most successful technology businesses since Cray Research in the 1990s. Five years after it was founded, Ziotech was acquired in 2000 by Seagate for $360 million. Nine years after Compellent was founded, it was acquired in 2011 by Dell for $960 million. One reason why these companies did so well was in how Soren and team vetted their ideas while developing their businesses. With Ziotech, for example, they would go to what they referred to as their 10 industry luminaries. We showed it to people in town that uh, you know, had knowledge of the industry and kind of got some reactions. And from that, then modified the, the, the game plan before we went off and started raising money and, and hiring people. So I think we identified some needs ourselves. We saw some opportunities that, uh, because of technology advances and then uh, bounced it off of you know, people in the market. Another key to Soren's success has been his ability to find, work with, and lead great partners with different points of view and skill sets. Soren's specialty, for example, was knowing how to lead, sell, and raise money. Over the years, he's raised more than $250 million and led financial transactions worth about $2 billion when included the sale of companies that he worked on. The hundreds of investor meetings he had along the way led to one of his biggest eye-opening experience. He says that investors back a company's leader more than its technology. You, you think they're investing in your idea. Or you're really having to focus on the technology and that front here. Um, but ultimately, investors are going to invest because they have confidence in you and, you and the team you know, that they're investing in. So, you know, that sounds trite, but when you really get down to it and see how real that is, that was really the case. So um, knowing that and being confident, and you don't have to worry as much about explaining the technology because a lot of times they're not going to understand it anyway, right? They're just trying to understand you and what you're going to be about, what you're motivated for, and do they have confidence you can pull it off. Most important to Soren, however, has been his ability to create a healthy and vibrant work culture. And it's this that he hopes people most remember him for. It was so important to us, we actually had a name for it. We called it Positive Aggressive. And uh, that's nice when the CEO comes up with a name and you have to memorize it. But I knew it worked when our employees were telling me that they're now trying to lead their personal life in a positive, aggressive mind, a mind, a mind state. So I still hear from employees about that today. So I think that whole culture thing is just real important to me and something I like to highlight as we do that. And a lot of people ask me, what's positive, aggressive? And, you know, positive or aggressive is about winning, but positive is about how you win. And uh, the best description I've had is, is Maya Angelou so it said that... Uh, you know, people will forget what you did, they'll forget what you said, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. So with Positive Aggressive, you make people feel good, even though you've had to do a tough negotiation or a, a tough business deal with them. But afterwards, they like working with you, and I hope that culture uh, sticks within. I hope that's my, my, uh, my, my uh, image out in the marketplace.